welcome back to Twins Try. I'm Christy. Today I'm going to be bringing you along to make a Hong Kong style baked pork chop rice. This is also called Turn Gong Ta Tan Tang Go Chu Pa Fan. And it is a very, very popular dish in any Hong Kong style cafe. I'm so excited to bring you along for this one because I am from Hong Kong and I thought it'd be really interesting for you guys to see how to make it. Today's video is a super special one because I'm going to be making this with my mom who's going to show me how to make it. Unfortunately, she doesn't like to be on camera, so you're going to see a lot of aerial views and a bunch of voiceovers. So let's go ahead and get started. Take approximately two pounds of pork and marinate it with one tablespoon crushed garlic, one tablespoon oyster sauce, one tablespoon soy sauce, half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of cornstarch, and one tablespoon of water. You can substitute the marinade if you wish, but the cornstarch and water helps to absorb into the pork to keep it tender and juicy, so I would not substitute that out. Marinating overnight is best, but if you're in a pinch for dinner, marinate for at least four hours. To fry the pork, we're going to dredge each piece in flour, then egg, and fry in a little oil on high. Try not to leave any dry spots. We use the smallest burner so that we don't burn the pork before it's cooked through. Cook the rest of your pork before we fry up some rice. We tripled our recipe here, but we'll have the recipe for one platter in the description. Set aside and let the pork rest because we're making fried rice next. To make fried rice, it's always better to use day-old rice because it's drier and the rice will not be stuck together. Cook two and a quarter cups of rice the night before for best results. We're making an extremely simple fried rice here with just adding three eggs and some salt. We sprayed some cooking oil to prevent the eggs from getting stuck to the pot. This also helps with frying up the rice and allowing it to separate into individual granules. For dropping in your eggs, give it a quick scramble and make a well with your rice. We drop in the eggs in two batches, being careful to mix and make sure the eggs are well combined before adding the second half. Once done, add in a little salt for flavor. The fried rice doesn't have to be heavily flavored since we are making a sauce that will go over the pork and the rice. Pour the fried rice into bake safe containers and top the rice with pieces of pork that has been resting. It's up to you on if you want to cut the pork, but we do it to make sure we cover the rice well. Next up, the sauce. You will need three large tomatoes cut into large chunks, one and a half onions of which one onion is cut into slivers like so, and the other half into small pieces. We will cook each differently for textural differences. To make the sauce, take two tablespoons of ketchup and to it add one tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of sugar. Set aside and in a wok or skillet, cook the one onion you cut into slivers until some color develops. Add in a 14 and a half ounce can of no or low sodium diced tomatoes. This will bring a very robust tomato flavor. Add in your ketchup mixture from earlier and let simmer. Cover with a lid. Now that the sauce is simmering, add in half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. Here is where you can add in the tomatoes and the remainder of your onions if you prefer a softer bite. Otherwise, let's move on to make the thickener for the sauce. Mix 3 tablespoons of flour and 4 tablespoons of water. This paste will take our sauce from thin and watery to the perfect consistency. Be sure to add a little at a time to ensure your sauce doesn't get too thick. You want the consistency to be like that of a jarred pasta sauce. Add in your tomatoes and onions and let it cook together for a minute and you're ready to assemble and bake. We're nearing the finish line. Scoop the sauce on top of the pork dish. Our version gives you chunks of tomatoes and onions that adds a nice crunch in contrast to the juicy and tender pork chop. To finish it off, add a healthy portion of cheese on top. Here is where you can go as liberally as you wish. I've seen versions that pack on the cheese for a beautiful cheese pool. However, as Asians with lactose intolerance, we have to be careful. Too much cheese can also mask the flavors of the dish, but ultimately, go as wild as you wish. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes or until the cheese is melted. Serve and enjoy! This dish is ultra popular in Hong Kong cafes. 
The pork is juicy and tender. The tomatoes give a sweet and savory umami flavor and is our top comfort foods that takes you back to Hong Kong. This is my second bowl because I forgot to film an outro, but it is so good. So the rice is tomato-y and oniony. It smells so good. It's slightly sweet from the ketchup-y uh, tomatoes and from the onions. And the pork chop is perfectly tender and juicy. And that's because we added the uh, cornstarch to uh, kind of loosen kind of the pork. Mm. It is so good. The pork chops are perfectly cooked. I don't know if you can see. Mm. It's still moist. Most pork chops are dried out, but the method that we use makes sure that it is not dry. I wish you could taste this. It is so good. Like, I don't know if you can see, but that pork is not dried out. And then with the rice, it's a perfect combo. It's your proteins, your carbs, and your fat all at once with the cheese. This definitely brings me back home and it's a dish that I'm super glad that I know how to make now and well worth the effort. It's super easy even though there's a lot of ingredients. It does take a little bit of time but I think it's worth it and I think that you should make it too. If you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get to see our next videos. And as always, let us know what you should try next on Twins Try. Bye!